PDR is important to farmers for two reasons. Uh, you know, number one, these people are incredibly proud of what they produce. That's why they do it over such a long period of time. And to know that people are going to recognise that work, there's going to be a little bit more of an understanding about what Herdwick Lamb stands for and what PDO status stands for is something they're incredibly proud of. And to know that that level of provenance gives us the opportunity to supply this product into some of the best restaurants in the world gives these people a lot of satisfaction. Uh, and I think also something which we've achieved and we hope to continue is to give farmers a premium price for Herdwick Lamb with a PDO. When you work as hard as these guys do, it's important that you get a fair price for it. And as a company, it's something we've always offered and something that we will continue to offer, particularly with the PDO backing. Play within a fortnight, these will uh, start lamb or less than a fortnight. And, and what's eaten then? They don't. It's the lamb that's eaten, not the. It's the lamb, but it's the lamb that we don't want. It's the lamb that's the weather lamb. All the female. That's last year's lambs. There, look. All spread out on that hillside. Um, when they all come through, they're all the female. Ah, the, right. The female sheep are all replacements to stay on this, to stay and keep this heathed and hefted system. Uh, Got you. It has to. It has to remain. What we're actually selling. And we'll, what we you know, need to get across to the public is if they're eating this Herdwick, they're not reducing the Herdwick sheep, they're making it sustainable for us because we need to sell this by the byproduct, which is the male lamb, which we don't want. So uh, you just keep a few rams back we then? We just keep for a the... few. We select actually out of about um, you know, maybe 400 lambs, uh, male lambs this time, we've selected, we've kept eight. Fantastic achievement to get them down there. It's um, and it's a combination, it, well, I don't think it would ever have happened without uh, people like Dan. Because um, Dan has that, he's just as enthusiastic at doing what he does as we are about doing what we do. Well the PDO, well, um, for those people who don't know, is uh, a European standard of, uh, of excellence really. Uh, it signifies the importance of the Herdwick breed uh, within the country, not just in, uh, in the Lake District. It's a, a, a European badge that assures anyone wishing to buy Herdwick meat product that any product that satisfies the criteria for PDO has been born, reared and slaughtered and then subsequently processed within the county of Cumbria. So you've got guarantee of having meat of a very high provenance and a very high quality. There's approximately uh, about 250, 260 uh, Herdwick sheep farms in the Lake District um, many of which have relatively small flocks but there are some that have quite large flocks uh, and it offers an opportunity to the farmers that can satisfy the criteria of the PDO to actually sell their product to advantage uh, and gain a little premium uh, at point of sale because the, the product is, is a designated uh, a product of designated origin. Yeah. Yeah, Prince Charles is a great fella. Um, he's very supportive of the Herdwick Shape Breeders, very supportive of Lake District life in general. Uh, he's supported us through the process of marketing uh, our Herdwick product having a cheap PDO, uh, and he's continuing to support us through his, uh, his countryside fund. And uh, yeah, we're very grateful. He's, he's a very straightforward sort of bloke, and uh, any help that we can get is fantastic, and to get royal endorsement is, is just uh, out of this world really isn't it yeah herdwick is a bit very unique it's very slow growing um, it, it's a special animal that obviously lives in the lake district um, it's very hardy but being that way it's very slow growing so the lambs that are born in march april um, don't get ready for slaughter till um, the following christmas or into the following year uh, most sheep our lowland sheep, um, they probably don't take any longer than three months to be ready. So the Herdwick uh, is much slower, takes longer, so you get more flavour with the meat. If it wasn't for the meat industry, um, and the restaurants selling the lamb, then basically the Herdwick wouldn't be in the Lake District, because the farmers farming it um, wouldn't be making any money, they'd have nothing to sell. Uh, it's one of the only sheep, or the only sheep, that can live in the Lake District. It is part of our heritage, but it also comes back to the point of what else would live up here. 
it's nice now, it's a nice day, but get in the middle of winter, you've got to have something, um, you know, the Herdwick is what can live here, and it does produce lambs each year, and it alters the look of the fells with them up here. It's something that people absolutely associate with the Lake District and being Lake District farmers. I think it's important that we champion product which relates to this area. And quality wise, I don't think you get better lamb anywhere. It's extremely stocky, hardy, small, it's slow growing, it's traditional. Um, but because of how slow growing it is, and because of the land that it's found on, because of the terrain that it's reared on, because of the quality of life it has, it gives you massive flavour and it gives you incredible texture and that is the big thing that all chefs are looking for. We've been using lamb as every restaurant uses lamb for, for many many years and you, sometimes you come across a fabulous product and which is grown by fabulous people who really care and have a, a great respect for a breed that might not be the sort of breed that makes the most amount of money, might not be the one that grows the fastest but it's the one that produces the most fabulous flavour and, and these lambs are, are really really special. Um, they're one of those ingredients that I will only use Herdwick now on my menu and we always use a whole animal. That's the only way you can get really good quality. It's slightly more aged than normal lamb. The flavour's already incredible. It's got great marbling and when you eat it, in, in fact I just came out of the kitchen and uh, the waiter came up to me and said, Table 29 just said that was the best piece of lamb they've ever eaten in their life. And I would have to agree with them. Um, so solely I only use that lamb. I was so inspired by the flavour and the taste of these, these animals that you know, I went up there for a weekend just to go to all the different farms, see how they're grown, see what makes it so special. You know, you've got those Herdwick lamb, they're walking around on the fells, walking up hills that no cow or a person's lucky to get up. And they're eating moss off the rocks and they're eating different herbs and different grasses. And they're, 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 uh, they're, they're, their diet is so varied, which I think contributes massively to the flavor of the meat. When you eat Herdwick, I think the first, first week I had Herdwick on the menu when I was buying them whole, at the end of service, the first time in nine years working at the library, I went upstairs after service and ate a whole plate of it with a glass of wine. It was that good. It was that good. And that's about the only time I've ever done that. I think probably if you ask me my top five favorite things to eat in Britain, ingredients wise, I would say that uh, heard it would probably, probably be number one, very closely by Belted Galloway from Cumbria also. Um, and then we've got fabulous native lobsters here and lots of fabulous uh, fish. I love mackerel and love turbot as well. So they're my sort of really favourite English ingredients I love. But I think Herdwick might be number one because there's such a difference to the normal lamb. You know, it's, it's miles apart. I was thinking about the farmers when I went up there. I thought, why are these guys doing it differently? And it's almost like they're up against up there. They're like battlers. They've got, they're up against the, the elements. The weather there was absolutely horrendous. They're trying to get these lambs in off the hills on a bike, dogs are up and down, they're trying to get them down um, and, and they're out in the most horrible weather when a lot of other lambs and farmers have got their cows and uh, sheep locked up in a shed all winter which makes it very easy for them and I just love the passion they had up there. The, the farmers had a real passion. They had a passion that I could relate with. They cared about their ingredient from the very first time it was born to the very last time it was sent to market and that was, that's really important to me that there's somebody else at the start of the line putting in so much effort. And what annoys me so much is when chefs don't realize that, a lot of chefs don't register the passion that these farmers have. And these, pa these farmers have got just as much passion as any cook I've ever worked with. And um, you know, we aren't the only one that work 80 nowadays. Those guys work hard and then some. And so that's why I think when you get these special products, they need to be given respect all the way to the end when we serve to our customers.